day we're on the Oregon Trail. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Angling Attic Pacific Northwest. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about another rig that when fished correctly can be very effective when it comes to targeting winter steelhead, and that's float fishing. So we're talking about basically floating a jig underneath of a bobber. In this video, we're gonna be covering what it is that you're gonna to need to get this started, how you can get it tied up with some options along the way, and also some tips for basically what it is that you're gonna be looking for when you're fishing this rig to know that you're fishing it correctly. So let's start out by covering what it is that you're gonna to need to get this rig set up. Now, when it comes to rod selection for this technique specifically, longer is better. Now, this doesn't mean you need to go run out and buy a new rod, but if you could be between that nine, nine foot six and 10 foot six range, uh, then you're gonna be in a good area that's gonna be able to allow you to get this rig out there and be able to fish it more effectively. So what I've got here are a couple different rods that I really like, uh, quality rods at an affordable price, and it's what I typically fish with out here, and that's gonna be Lamaglass. Now the first thing we've got here, which is really good for this technique, is a Lamaglass X11. This one's 10 foot six. Uh, great rod, I love it. And it's a little brother. We've got the nine foot six Lamaglass X11. Both of these rated for uh, eight to 12 pound line. And for those of you that like using a bait casting setup, this one's nine foot four, so it's a little bit more on that shorter end. And I know you can find some that are out there that are longer. We had nine foot four uh, red line from Lamaglass. And that's just a couple different options, you guys. Like I said, you use what you have, or if you can find something that's kind of cheap, it just kind of gets you started uh, in the right direction. And then you can decide then if you like this technique and want to uh, up your gear game from there. Now when it comes to reel selection, guys, just keep this one simple. And what I typically do is find one that for one, feels good in my hands and two, finding a reel that's gonna be able to handle the amount of line that I need to put on it. And the last thing you wanna have happen is go out get on a nice big fish and just have it shred all of your line and end up breaking you off, leaving you with no fish and no line left on your reel. So just those finding something that's gonna be able to handle what it is that you need to get the job done and something that feels good in your hands. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. This is what you're gonna to need to get this rig set up. Now we've got a couple of different bobbers here because I wanna show you guys how you're gonna to wanna to match up your bobber size with your weight size and your jig size and so this rig is fishing correctly in the water. So we're gonna need a bobber, we're gonna need a bobber stop. So we've got two different styles of bobber stops here. You're gonna want two four millimeter beads. The four millimeter is not crucial, but that's usually what gets the job done with this setup. We're also gonna need an inline weight, and obviously we're gonna need a jig, so any jig will do. And lastly, we're gonna want some leaders. So I've got some 10 pound fluorocarbon here from Berkeley. All right, now as for most rigs, there's multiple ways of setting things up, and this rig being no exception. Uh, for this demonstration today, we're gonna to be setting up our bobber directly on our braided line for those that are using a braided line. But another popular way of doing things is using a, a bumper. And I do have a setup that I'll show you guys after we get this set up so you guys can see what the bumper is. But for this, we're gonna to wanna to start off with our bobber. And so what we're gonna to need to do is take our bobber stop and get that set up on our, our braided line here. So how we're gonna do that, bobber stop comes on these little uh, straws here. So you're gonna to wanna to slide the whole straw onto your line and we're gonna slide it up a little ways. And you're gonna to wanna to grab onto the straw with one finger and grab onto the bobber stop with the other making sure that when you pull this straw out that you're actually removing it from your line completely. Now your bobber stop's gonna be loose and so we can just tighten that up a little bit and we're just gonna push it up out of our way for right now and we'll come back to that. Then the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take one of our four mil beads and thread that onto the line which is gonna run up there to the bobber stop. We'll push that out of the way. Then we're just gonna take our bobber and run our line from the top of the bobber down to the bottom. Pull that out. And again, we're just gonna slide it out of the way. Now we can take our last four millimeter bead and we're gonna thread that onto our line, which is gonna bring us now to our inline weight. Now, when it comes to using this inline weight and the knot that I'm gonna use to uh, tie it on there, uh, I usually prefer to use the uni knot when I'm tying this knot, but 
I always recommend that when you're tying a knot, use the one that you feel the most comfortable and confident tying. So I'm gonna use my uni knot and you guys use whatever knot it is that you prefer to use. Now, after you get that tied, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to clip off your tag end from your knot there, which is gonna bring us down to our leader, which is gonna take us down to our jig. So leader length and leader size, there really is no one answer to that because really it's gonna be dependent on what the conditions are like out there. So again, in between that eight pound to maybe a 15 or a 17 pound, you guys can kind of start to figure out what's gonna work for which conditions. But what I'm basing this setup today off of is what I know the river conditions are today. So I know we're gonna be low and clear. So I am dumbing down our presentation a bit using a smaller bobber, a smaller weight and a smaller jig and with that we're going to be using a 10 pound fluorocarbon which is going to go with our uh, smaller presentation here so let's go ahead and clip off about a two and a half three foot section of leader guys so when it comes to the knot that you're going to want to use for this i'm just going to say it again guys go with what you feel comfortable and confident tying i typically use a, a fisherman's knot or the improved clinch knot which uh, has given me no problems yet so now with our leader tied on, we can now get to our jig. Now there's a variety of jigs out there, different colors, different brands, different styles. I recommend you guys just go out, get what you can afford. And if you can get a little bit of a variety, go ahead and get a little bit of a variety and uh, different sizes because this here is a one eighth ounce, but there might be days that you wanna be putting on a, a half ounce or a quarter ounce or something like that. So there are different sizes out there and uh, just having a variety is always a good idea. So when it comes to this knot, again, I'm just going to use the improved clinch knot or the fisherman's knot. Just another knot that hasn't given me any problems with this setup yet. And that's going to be our rig, which is going to bring us back up here to our bobber stop, which we just kind of slid on and loosely left up here. So what we're going to want to do is tighten it up just a tiny bit more. And we're going to want to clip off these tag ends, but we're going to want to leave enough left on there that you're still able to adjust these because they do have a tendency to... Uh, kind of loosen up after so many casts. So you're gonna to wanna to clip off those tag ends. And as for most of you guys know, this bobber stop is what's gonna allow you to change the depth that this rig is fishing. Uh, this setup, when being fished correctly, is actually gonna be a straight up and down. And you wanna be fishing as close as you can to the bottom without dragging this along the bottom. So if you're fishing this correctly, you might every now and then see a little bit of a tick going on in your bobber, which means that your jig is kind of tapping along some stuff on the bottom. But what you don't want to see is it uh, leaning either way to any extreme. And there's different reasons for that because there's a few considerations to take in here. Now, if you don't have enough weight on here, uh, what could happen is your jig and your weight is going to actually get ahead of your bobber. Now, if we've got a river moving from your right to left, my left to right, uh, the bobber should be straight up and down, but if we see this angle that's going on here, that means our gear is getting ahead of our bobber, which means that we either need to add more uh, weight, like say use a bigger jig, or we need to be adding a bigger weight to our inline uh, weight that's down here. Now, obviously up and down is correct. Now if we're leaning forward, which means that our gear is now upriver and our bobber is ahead of our gear, that means that we're going to be dragging along the bottom or again what could potentially be happening is that this this bobber is moving so much faster than your gear that your uh, gear is actually high up in the water just being drugged through so you're really looking for that that straight up and down and as i recommended in our last video uh, there's a couple of ways to approach when you go out and start making your first cast now that's to set your bobber stop short so when you go out there uh, you can see what your bobber is doing and you're going to be looking for that straight up and down with a little bit of that uh, tick to it, knowing that your jig is hitting the bottom. So I would recommend setting your bobber kind of short and go out and make a cast. Now, if you don't ever see that action on your bobber, what I would do is reel it in and slide your bobber stop up just a little bit further, which is going to allow your gear to uh, fish further down in the water. And once you start to see that correct action in your bobber, then you're going to know you're at that proper depth. Now, obviously, the river isn't going to stay the same all along, so there might need to be some adjustments made. But that approach to going out and finding the bottom can save you a lot of gear and get you into the strike zone a lot quicker. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is how I, at the beginning of the video, I was talking about getting our bobber stop set up uh, on our braided line here as opposed to using a bumper. So what I would like to show you guys here should be hanging down. Get off the lures. 
So what you can see here, this was set up for a, a bead fishing. So we've got the bobber coming down. Now this would be set up on our braided line here, but what we've done is tied on about a six foot bumper. So what we have here is the braided line that's coming off of our rod, but then we ended up doing a uni to uni knot with six foot, six feet of a line, which is then gonna take us down and we've got the bobber stop, a clear bobber stop set up on here. So what this does is when your gear's floating in the water and say our bobber stop is set up higher, we're still gonna have our inline weight showing in the water, but having this fluorocarbon down in the water column as opposed to having this high-vis yellow line is going to be a big factor and it's going to help you, uh, I would think, get more strikes because there's less uh, something in the water that's going to distract the fish and a bright yellow line will probably do it. Where it wouldn't matter so much if you're out there fishing for a salmon, but as I brought up before, uh, steelhead are a lot more line shy than the salmon are, so you need to be a little more careful uh, about what the fish may potentially see and anything that you can do to improve your chances uh, of catching a fish or uh, definitely something I would go with and uh, would also recommend. All right, just a couple more things, you guys, and we are done. One of them being scent. Yes, yes, always use scent if you can. As we brought up in last week's video, uh, there is a Procure, a nice gel that you can use, but when we're talking about fishing with jigs and being at their hair and fur and things like this, you want to use something that's water soluble. And if you guys have made the mistake once, you usually only make it once before you learn your lesson of what does and does not belong on your jigs. So Procure has got, Procure has got an awesome uh, product out there. It's water soluble, holds its scent, and it also doesn't mat down and build up uh, any gunkiness on your uh, jigs. So there's that product out there. There's a bunch of water soluble products out there and I recommend you guys uh, go out and try and find what it is that you like and what's affordable. Uh, it's a great thing to add on and uh, obviously it's gonna help potentially increase uh, strikes. So lastly, the other thing we're gonna, be, we're gonna talk about is I brought up wanting to match up your, uh, your jig size and your weight size with your bobber because what you don't wanna do is overload your bobber or underload it. So what we're talking about is when you buy bobbers, they'll have a weight on there. And this one here being a half ounce, this one being a quarter ounce. So what we're trying to do here is match up a correct size. And so this one here being a quarter ounce, if I were to put a half ounce weight on there, already I've overloaded and exceeded what this bobber can do. So if I were to throw a half ounce weight on here with my one eighth ounce jig, my bobber is most likely when I make a cast is going to disappear underneath the water. So what we've done today is since I have a, a quarter ounce float, we did a one eighth ounce weight with a one eighth ounce jig, which obviously equates to a quarter ounce. So now we're matching our weights with our bobber. So now I know when I throw this thing out there, it's gonna be uh, maximizing its effectiveness because that's the weight that this was meant to be floated underneath of it. So just something to kind of keep in mind that you don't want to overdo it, you don't want to underdo it, and you can make different changes. And again, it's really kind of dependent on the conditions. Well, that's going to do it for this week, you guys. I hope there is enough information in there for some of you guys to be able to get out there this winter steelhead season and uh, be able to track down some fish. Now, if you guys missed last week's video, Bead Fishing 101, go ahead and give that a look. And if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. We're going to have a lot of videos coming down for winter steelhead prep. And then once these fish hit the river, we'll be out there getting on some fish. So until then, best of luck to you guys and hope to see you out on the river.